Hello everyone. This is the second part of tooth formation and in this video I am going to tell you about apposition, root formation and a few developmental defects associated with the tooth formation. Let's first see the differentiation of the secretory cells in the late well stage that would lead to the formation of enamel and dentine. The inner enamel epithelial cells in the late well stage would first elongate and form the preamyloblast. And this preamyloblast secretes the growth factors like TGF beta into the basement membrane from where this growth factor is released into the dental papilla. And here the dental papillary cells when they uptake this growth factor they would differentiate into the odontoblast. In the next step the basement membrane supporting the inner enamel epithelial cells disintegrates and is removed by the preamyloblast while at the same time the odontoblasts are secreting predentine that is the organic matrix of the dentine. And as soon as these preamyloblasts come in contact with the predentine, they differentiate into amyloblast. During this differentiation, the nucleus of the amyloblast migrates from its distal end to its proximal end, which is known as reversal of polarity. And also here you must notice that it was the inner enamel epithelial cell that first released the growth factor, which led to differentiation of odontoblast, and only then the product of odontoblast led to the differentiation of amyloblast. This interaction which led to differentiation of amyloblast is known as reciprocal induction. Now after this first layer of dentin is formed and the amyloblasts have differentiated, the nutrition from the dental papillary vessels to the amyloblast is denied. So now the amyloblast must look for a new source of nutrition. And this new source of nutrition is provided by the glycosaminoglycans in the enamel organ. And as this glycosaminoglycans is consumed by the amyloblast, the enamel organ collapses. And with the collapse of enamel organ, the dental follicle vessels come in close proximity to the amyloblast. And it is from the dental follicle that the amyloblast would derive their nutrition for the rest of their life. So once the amyloblast and odontoblast have differentiated, the enamel and dentine start to form at the cusp tip at DEJ. The enamel forms from the tip to the cervical margin and from DEJ to the surface, while the dentine, same as enamel, would form from cusp tip towards the cervical margin and from DEJ, it would form inwards towards the pulp. Now once the crown is completed, it's time for the root formation. The cervical portion of enamel organ is called the cervical loop and it consists of just outer enamel epithelium and inner enamel epithelium. The cervical loop proliferates apically to form the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath or as we call it HERS. To give you a quick introduction, after the HERS proliferates, the dental papilla is stimulated to differentiate into odontoblast and form dentine of the root and the HERS disintegrates immediately to form the cell rest of molasses which migrate away into the periodontal ligament space. The dental follicle cells differentiate into cementoblast and form cementum while the dental follicle fibers reorient to form the periodontal ligament. Now in this animation, you will see the cervical loop proliferating apically to form the HERS. Now with the proliferation of HERS, the dental papillary cells are stimulated to differentiate into odontoblast, while at the same time, the HERS disintegrates to form the cell rests. And these cell rests are located apically and they would migrate immediately into the periodontal ligament. Now while all this is happening, the odontoblast has started to form its organic matrix and when the dental follicle cells come in contact with this organic matrix, they differentiate into the cementoblast and the dental follicle fibers reorient themselves to form the PDL which overlaps or interdigitates with the organic matrix of the dentine. Now here you will see that the odontoblastic process extends only halfway towards the surface. Now following this, the odontoblast would secrete the matrix vesicle at the tip of the odontoblastic process. And this matrix vesicle is responsible for the mineralization of this organic matrix. And the mineralization takes place both inwards and outwards. Here you will see that the outer half of the mineralized tissue differs from the inner half of the mineralized tissue. The outer half has organic matrix from both odontoblast and dental follicle in the form of PDL fibers. And the mineralization is done by odontoblast. Also, it lacks the dentinal tubule and for all these reasons, you can neither call it dentine and nor can you call it cementum and that is why it is called hyaline layer of Hopewell Smith. The inner layer on the other hand is a typical dentine with the organic matrix and mineralization from the odontoblast and also you can appreciate the dentinal tubules. Now following this, 
the cementoblast at the periphery mineralizes the PDL fibers and this forms the acellular extrinsic fiber cementum. And this process would keep on continuing towards the apex till the entire root is formed. Now let's take a look at a few developmental defects that are associated with the tooth formation. First, the defects associated with initiation. The few examples include anodontia, hypodontia, oligodontia and supernumerary teeth. A few examples of defects associated with morphodifferentiation are microdontia, macrodontia, dense invaginatus, dense evaginatus, talons cusp, torodontism, fusion, gemination, concrescence, dilaceration, supernumerary cusps and supernumerary roots. A few examples of defects associated with histodifferentiation are amylogenesis imperfecta, dentinogenesis imperfecta, enamel hypoplasia, dentine dysplasia and cemental hypoplasia. A few examples of defects associated with apposition include amylogenesis imperfecta, enamel hypoplasia, dentinogenesis imperfecta, dentine dysplasia, regional odontodysplasia, cemental hypoplasia, hypercementosis, interglobular dentine and enamel pearl. That's it for now friends. Please watch the third part of this video for epithelial mesenchymal interaction and genetic regulation of tooth formation. I hope you like this video and if you do like this video and it was helpful to you, please like, comment and share and please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.